What's up YouTube? This is Jables. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm pretty excited to be opening up this uh, Hot Toys figure here of the Mandalorian. This is the season one figure. The first couple of episodes he had the OG armor that was all beat up before he got an upgrade here. And this is exactly what that figure is. It's the first Mandalorian figure that Hot Toys made. And uh, it's going to be pretty epic. I'm, I'm excited to look at all the accessories here and see what we got. Model number TMS007. The uh, television masterpiece series right here. So this is only the seventh television series figure that uh, Hot Toys has made. And just to set the record straight here, uh, it says right here that this, in fact, is not a toy. So... It's a doll. Let's go ahead and get the box open here and see what we have. Uh, oh, I forgot. There's uh, some really nice box art that comes with these. Uh, kind of an overlay to the figure after you get the, the top off here. Always some really nice artwork on this. It's like a lot of people will stand these up behind their figures just to, to show off. And I don't think I have the quite the right setup for that. Whoever they got in charge of taking the pictures for these and uh, you know staging the figures always does an excellent job. All right, so right here on top, it looks like he comes with a few sets of hands and uh, his uh, tracking fob and one of his um, bombs or thermal detonators here. So let's open that up and take a look at these. So what we have here is two sets of uh, extra hands. You get the hands that, that come with them, and then you have uh, two sets of extra hands. You had a pair of fists here for fighting and um, pretty cool detail on there. I like the paint. Uh, all scuffed up and uh, definitely this is some worn armor that's seen some better days uh, and then you got two two hands here that are for holding pistols or weapons of some sort but also really nice detail on those i'm sure this whole figure has all kinds of excellent detailing to it so i can't wait to uh, take it out of the box here finally we also have his tracking fob here for uh, when he's hunting down his bounties for how small that is, that's some pretty good level of detail here. And we also have one loose grenade or a thermal detonator. And um, I think this one, if I remember right, goes clipped into his belt. There's a couple of stationary ones and then this one can either slide in or, or uh, be placed in his hand for use. So that's pretty cool. When you take the top cover off here, you're gonna notice this piece of plastic right there. And if you do wind up getting one of these figures, don't lose these because that sits on top of the paint on his chest or his helmet or whatever is there to keep it from rubbing on the inside of this piece of plastic and having the paint rub off. So if you ever do pick up one of these, don't lose them in case you ever put it back in the box. You're gonna to wanna to wrap everything back up like this, the way you see it now, if possible. Sometimes you rip these out to get them open, but um, keep it all so you can keep your figure nice if you ever have to store it or something. So right here, we've got his uh, rifle. Oh, I forgot that it came with a really cool lightning effect you could put on there. Let's open that up and see what we got. Let's look at his rifle here. The painting on the end of this is just awesome. I like how the heat temperatures change, you know, as it gets hotter towards the end, it turns, turns more blue. That's a really cool effect that they painted on there and it looks phenomenal in hand. Really awesome looking detailed gun here. The metal has little scuff marks on it. Well, it's not metal, but the plastic that's supposed to be metal has little scuff marks on it that uh, definitely show that this rifle is not a showpiece. It's been used to take down bounties. Um, yeah, this is awesome. This piece is really cool. Uh, this strap holds the gun to his chest. Uh, if I remember correctly, this piece right here is really kind of you got to be careful with it. I think it bolts right there into that little hole. If you're not careful, it will snap off in there. So I'm not even going to try to put it on there. But uh, let's continue looking at this real quick. The uh, paint on the wood here, the uh, stock is really nice. It looks like a real piece of wood. And they added this uh, piece here with some sc some screws and detailing on the end that just, you know, this is a really well-made like accessory here this is the kind of stuff that you would hope for when you're paying for a figure that cost you know a couple hundred dollars a few hundred dollars so this is a uh, really awesome let's look at this lightning effect that comes with it here i'm not really sure how this goes on here i think you just kind of maybe push it in there but uh that's pretty cool gives it a nice uh, effect 
and a nice um there we go maybe like that yeah that's awesome uh, if you pose that on your shelf with that that's definitely going to uh, make a statement and um, you know draw some attention to this figure that's really awesome very cool I don't know if I'll, I'll uh, display mine with that, but it's a really, really awesome option. Let's take a look at his blaster pistol here. Really nice level of detail on this also. You know, for how small these accessories are, they really, really make them look realistic. And this is awesome sidearm. Let's take a look at the figure himself here and take the uh, plastic off of him. Um, you'll, you'll see that his arm, his hands and his feet and usually the helmet, yeah, back here there's a piece of plastic also. They, um, you know, go to protect the helmet as it's sitting in there so it doesn't rub and get any marks on it. But um, that helmet is epic. The paint looks really nice. It's super shiny. There's a lot of dirt detail on there because, you know, he's a dirty bounty hunter and he goes after his prey. And this looks freaking awesome. I cannot believe how good this looks. This is going to be really awesome looking on the shelf here. It's got a nice cape. Oh, he's got his uh, Beskar Steel pauldron here and his Durasteel like other one. I think back here there's another pauldron you can place. I'll probably swap it out for that one if that's the other one he had originally. Um, just because I do have a whole Beskar uh, Mandalorian with the child that we're, we're going to open later. And I'd like this one to be as original as possible to, to show the different styles, but let's take all the plastic off the arms and legs here and take a look at everything. Right off the bat, my attention is drawn to these blaster marks that are just riddled throughout the armor. They look so good, how they painted them and they added the depth to them. And the shoulder pieces, there's some on the chest here. You have them on the thigh pieces. Um, the boots are not super beat up. But, uh, you know, there's scuffing here on the bracers, on the back, underneath the cape, and on the, uh, the little uh, tailbone clip here. Like, that is, that's some awesome detailing. And it just looks good. Like, this is covered up by a cape. They didn't need to do this. But, man, it just looks great. That is some awesome detailing. The leather strapping on the bandolier looks really good. Um, he's got a bunch of these. I don't know what this is for. This is to hold his rifle, but uh, he's got a bunch of extra cartridges everywhere for his rifle. There's even one missing here to show that he uh, definitely uses them, but uh, awesome. The, the pleather looks really good. The uh, There's more, even more down here. Wow. I think he's wearing a fat suit, which is uh, definitely a extra layer of clothing underneath the outer layer here to make them look a little more thick. Some people take them off, but I'm not gonna mess with that. Man, this this figure is great. Um, yeah, the fat suit kind of gets in the way a little bit when you're bending the legs up, but you know, some it's got some decent, it's got some decent movement, um, you know, not too bad. This little hole here is what I was talking about with this rifle, you can, you can pin this into here and it holds the rifle over his shoulder like kind of down like this but from what I'm hearing this piece will get stuck in there and it'll break off so I'm not going to put it in there they should have made that a magnet luckily I've I read or read and saw some reviews of other people opening this when it came out and uh, I'm not going to make that mistake because unfortunately other people already had to make that mistake and kind of ruin their figure a little bit but his cape here has a lot of like frays at the bottom. This hole right here in the middle of the cape is not um, broken. This is actually for the, 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 the pulse rifle to fit through here or the strap or something like that. So that's actually functional. That's supposed to be there like this. But all the frays and holes at the bottom are, are definitely just worn out stuff. So this is uh, really cool. I cannot wait to do some posing with this, but uh, let's put them aside and see what else is in the box here. You probably noticed this Stormtrooper helmet sitting here, and this is a definitely a deceased Stormtrooper. Uh, his helmet, it's got a lot of blood on it, it's got a lot of dirt on it. It's really freaking sweet looking. There's a couple of pikes here, and one of those pikes, you can 
put the helmet on the pike and it actually goes on the display stand next to the Mandalorian. This is an awesome level of detail that they added to this figure that they, they didn't have to and I'm glad that they did because it just adds another element to you know the figure. These are the two pikes that I was talking about here and you can take the Stormtrooper helmet and stick it on there just like this and it will stand up and it looks awesome. Now this is the base that the figure comes with to stand on. Uh, I'm not really a fan of this textured base with the foot holes because it's usually not where you're going to put the figure's feet um, when you stand him in the pose that you want. So kind of having a predetermined foot location is a bad idea. I did kind of look in here and you can't take this off. I, I don't think, I think it's hollow in there. So you probably break it trying to take it apart. The two pikes with the Stormtrooper helmet go right in these holes. And this hole right here is for the, the crotch holder, the crotch grabber. And this is what holds the figure up. You put it at the height that you want, like that. And you put the figure on it like this and it holds him up so he doesn't fall over. And uh, you know, there it says the Star Wars, the Mandalorian on the front and a nice plaque. And uh, yeah, I, I, I wish it was just a flat black or like one of those imperial floor grading looks to it but uh you know that's the, i think that's the only bad thing about this figure that i've seen so far is this base here is not not really great so i guess i can't really complain about that but uh here is his shoulder pauldron that you can uh, put on him this is before he got his beskar uh, piece made with that first piece of beskar he got from the client uh, I'm going to swap it over real quick because I'm going to display mine with this because I think it looks cooler and more unique. Plus, I have, I'll have another Mandalorian figure that's all Beskar, so I don't want all the Beskar on this one too. So, And there you go. Now you got a shoulder piece that matches the gloves, which... Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I think these might be Shore Trooper pieces that he's just wearing. Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's kind of what it reminds me of here. Yeah, I, I like that look. I like the blue. You can kind of throw the cape up so you can see it or uh, hide it a little bit. But the reason I started with this figure first is because this was the first Mandalorian figure I picked up. And I'm going to kind of open them up in order here just so I can start my Mandalorian shelf. I'll have this OG Mando and IG-11, the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, the Armorer, and so on and so forth, kind of all on one shelf together. But starting with the first and the classic one is I think is most important. So that's really cool. And I think that's everything that's in the box. That's it, except for a couple of extra uh, hand pegs here. If something breaks, there is a manual right here called the instruction sheet. I almost never read that so yeah that's all that's in the box so i'm going to take all these accessories that i have and i'm going to do some poses here and see what we can come up with All right, after posing this guy for a little bit, there got a couple takeaways here. One, I absolutely love the look of this guy. I think he looks completely epic. The helmet is just, the more I look at it, the more I, I just think it's awesome. The fat suit underneath there, though, I can completely understand why people will take this out because 
I had a hard time posing him if I wanted his arm to go straight. This arm does not want to come up. As you can see, it just kind of stops. Um, you can kind of wiggle it around and get it up a little bit more. But if you wanted him to hold like his blaster straight out in front of him with a straight arm, like that's pretty much impossible with the fat suit underneath him. Both arms were like that. Um, the legs had a little bit, I felt like had a little bit more movement with the suit. And you know, you can twist the, the torso a little bit, but the fabric does pretty much stop it from doing that. That aside though, I think this is really awesome. And all the details on this figure, I believe it's going to be a collector's piece that um, people who miss out on it are gonna regret it later. So if you're into collecting Hot Toys, Star Wars figures, and you don't have this guy, look for a good deal for him because he, he is definitely worth it. Um, I'm never gonna put that in there though because I don't ever want that to break. So I'm just, I'm repeating that just in case you get this figure and you try it, you definitely don't want to do that. Um, yeah. So the last thing we have to do is find a spot for him to go in the case. So I'm probably gonna go make some room here and we'll put him in there right now, all right? I think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this TIE Pilot out, put him back in his box, and we'll move Captain Phasma to the back. Stormtrooper. And we'll put the Mandalorian right front and center. Yeah, I like it. I think we'll, we'll slowly get rid of the um, Force Awakens figures here and we'll start our Mandalorian collection here and go that way. Appreciate you guys joining me today and I hope you liked that unboxing video. Let me know what you guys think of this figure down below. I think it's totally epic and it's probably going to be one of my favorite pieces for a long time if not forever. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.